Hello, my name is Danny Kim. I am the third chair violist of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Um, this is my fifth season with the BSO. I started playing the violin when I was five years old. Uh, I started my lessons with my mother. She was a Suzuki violin teacher. And then at the age of 16, um, after hitting a growth spurt and finding a new found love for chamber music, I switched to the viola, which is what I've been playing since then. All right, so I'll talk about the two main parts of the viola, or to play the viola, um, one major part is the bow. Uh, and the main parts of the bow, this is the tip, this is the stick, then down here we have the frog, and then this little piece down here is called the screw or the button. And uh, the reason it's called a screw is because you screw it in and out to change the tension on this white part you see here. And this white part here is actually made of a horse's hair. And the horse's hair is required um, to create friction with the string and the viola to actually get the sound to vibrate and come out of the instrument. Um, so when we are not using the bow, when it's sleeping, when it's in bed in my, uh, in my case, um, we loosen it to protect the, the natural curve that's in this piece of wood. Because if we tighten it all the time, the piece of wood here will start to get warped, and we don't want that. So when we're ready to play, we tighten it, and then there's tension on the, on the hair, which allows us um, to have a different articulation and different types of bow strokes on the viola. And then the other major, major part, so this thing right here is called rosin. It's basically, uh, it looks almost like a little hockey puck. Um, it's made of tree sap. And you put this on like so, and that little bit that ends up on the hair is what uh, allows us to actually create the friction with the string on the viola. So it sounds something like this. So that actually allows us to create a true friction with the string, which allows us to create a beautiful sound of the viola. All right, so that's the bow. Now the viola. Uh, the main parts are, this part here is called the scroll. Then we have the tuning pegs. Back here is the neck. This black part here is called the fingerboard. This thing right here is called the bridge, this little thin piece of wood. This black piece of wood right here is called the tailpiece. And that's basically just the viola right there. But uh, in the last couple hundred years or 100 years or so, we've made the instrument more comfortable to play. So this thing right here is called a chin rest. And this allows our chin to be much more comfortable when we play the instrument. And then this black thing back here is called a shoulder rest. And neither of these are required for the instrument to play, but it just it makes our life a lot easier when you're playing you know, several hours a day every day on, on the viola. So uh, the way we change pitch on the viola, there's two ways. One is by changing the tension. So the tension uh, we change by moving these pegs over here. So if you see an orchestra sometimes at the beginning of a concert, uh, you'll see um, the string players all kind of messing with these little, little knobs back here. They're called tuning pegs. And I'll show you basically by, uh, by turning them one way or another, you can change the tension of the string, which ends up changing the pitch of the string. So I'll demonstrate. So if you increase the tension, the pitch goes up. And if you decrease, or if you move it back down, or decrease the tension, the pitch goes back down. So that's how we change uh, the pitch by changing the tension. The other way is changing the length of the string. And that's the most common way we change pitch, uh, which is why our fingers are moving all over this fingerboard thing right here. So every time we put a finger down, we're changing the length of the string, which ends up changing the pitch. Something like that. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention is it's very important after you're done playing every day to take a rag, a, a, a dry rag, and just wipe off a lot of that rosin that has kind of come off. So this allows for the instrument to stay nice and clean, and it's, it's, you don't want to put a, a dirty instrument to bed in the case. So same thing with the bow as well. Um, you don't need to clean the white part here, you just need to clean this wooden part. So I take a little bit of cloth, slide it through, and like so. And that's it.
All right, so every day I start with the same routine. It's a scale system that my teacher gave me, and it's basically just, it's just a normal scale that I increase in tempo every, so I start slow and I get faster and faster. Uh, an example would be just a one octave thing is. So they just get faster and faster every time I play. I do three octaves, um, and then after that I do arpeggios in that same key. So I actually just pick one key a day. So right now I just did C major, tomorrow I'll do C minor. The day after I'll do C sharp uh, minor or um, D flat major. I just chromatically go up the fingerboard. Um, and basically, so I just focus on one scale each day and then do arpeggios with it. After that, I'll, after I've done my warm up in the scales and arpeggios, I move to Bach. Um, so I basically play Bach, solo Bach every day. It's a great way to just, it, it, he's my favorite composer, and it's a great way to kind of just really get into your, um, get your artistic voice warmed up also, as well as your fingers, and it's, it's kind of just like, it's vitamins every day that you want to take. It's, it's not like, you know, it's eating your vegetables that you don't want to eat. They're, they're very good for you, and it, it, they taste great. So, um, and after that, I'll usually move on to basically whatever I have to re prepare for the week, whether it be you know orchestra music, or a concerto, or chamber music, or sometimes if I'm preparing for an audition, I'll practice orchestra excerpts for that too. But pretty much every day, I'll, I'll start with scales and then Bach. I can't really give a length of time that's ideal every day. Um, what would be ideal is just do it every day. So it's better to get it out even if you only feel like you got five minutes Honestly, if you get it out and only do five minutes, that probably ends up turning into you know, 15 or 20 at least, because you kind of get, the hardest thing is actually sometimes just getting started. When I'm preparing for auditions, um, I usually will try to limit it to four hours. I won't do more than four hours, just because you don't want to over, overdo anything, and also you need to keep your mind fresh. So I'll try to split that up with maybe two um, hour and a half or two hour, two hour sessions in the morning, the evening or something like that, and do other things to keep my mind fresh during the day. But short answer to that would just be try to do some every day get into the habit of the discipline of getting and practicing every day. So obviously you have to prepare uh, before you go to the first rehearsal, whether it be a chamber music rehearsal or an orchestral service. So a lot of that is just you gotta be, you know, um, in your own practice room learning your notes and learning everything you have to do that requires you to perform that your part at a high level. Then the next challenge is going to the rehearsal and then putting it together with however many voices there are. In orchestra, you have to put it together with 100 other voices and then chamber music that could be between one and, I don't know, 10 other people potentially. So uh, in chamber music and orchestra, it's, it's good to, to, to know or have a score. It's also really important to play off of a really good addition. Um, that's, you would probably ask your teacher about what a good addition it is because there's a lot of different ones for um, especially standard pieces. So come prepared, bring a pencil. That's a big thing, not a pen. Pen is, pens are not supposed to be marked up in parts because you can't erase them. Uh, so definitely bring a pencil, um, have a score, have a good addition, and then bring a positive attitude, basically. Uh, and be, be also, the, the, what will make it more pleasurable for you when you're at rehearsal is if you really know your own parts, you can really enjoy how your part fits in with everything else, and you'll actually be able to enjoy the piece much, much more. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 